Hey guys, Sierra Bailey here with Excel Commercial Real Estate. The video you're watching ties into our event in June, Accelerate. If you want to learn more about what you see today, scan the QR code on your screen or click the link in the description to get your tickets now before early bird pricing runs out. Enjoy the video. I want to suggest a new word. I don't know what he meant by the word habit or if we're even translating it well. I want to use ritual. Success, in my view, should be a ritual. A ritual is just a habit that's close to your heart, comes from your heart. I've had a lot of habits in my life that came and went. But creating my success, now I'm just so acutely aware that my habits, my foundational habits for how I start my day, creating habits throughout the day that are based on all the brain science I know, but also on what you know, I know I really want in life. That's, that's where I wanna live from now. And it's incredibly helpful to realize, oh, you know, I failed again. That's kind of a willpower will, will statement. Um, it's just not gonna last forever. It's not gonna take you the distance. Well, I do, I do have a, a reframing, a cognitive reframing for that though. Go. So um, when, when we have a quote unquote failure, mm -hmm. um, the way that we reframe that in our minds is that that is tuition. Nice. Perfect. So, yeah. well, you know, to take it to the story that I'm, I'm telling myself is, oh my gosh, that, you know, that cost all that money and all that time wasted and all that, you know, reputational capital, whatever. And I'm like, well, that was an expensive mistake or I could look at it and go, I could pay a lot of money to go take a class to learn that same thing, but I would, but it wouldn't really stick. This is just tuition. And an example with that, um, of, of, of that with the corollary to what we are doing is how many times have you heard a speaker that's come here to one of our events and they've, they've said, I underrate at least one deal a week or every couple of days until I find them, until I've learned what it is that I need to do. You've heard that almost every, to almost every speaker when they are really truly successful investors, they have the habit of looking at deals and learning how to do that. And it didn't come easy. They had to start with retraining their brain. And that is one of those habits of success is learning how to underwrite and getting in front of those properties and to learn the vocabulary of the deals. Um, so from the standpoint of, and then you do it if you didn't do well, rather than look at it as, you know, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be a good investor. I'm never going to succeed. It's, that was tuition, right? So you can reframe mm -hmm. how you think about that. So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a level of commitment that's important. I, th I think the most, the most powerful thing I've ever heard from success principles and other places is it's so important to start with, I am taking 100% responsibility for my life and my experience and my results, right? Accountability. We, yeah, 100%. Personal accountability. I, you, you, yeah. if, if it's delusional, it's the right delusion. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, 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 I agree 100%. It, it really works. Um, I, was, I was doing uh, some coaching with a friend earlier uh, this, well, last year, and he said, um, you know, well, what's your, you know, like write down a fear of failure. And it's like, well, if I fail in this business, like, oh my gosh, I'm failing at business and life. That's just huge. And then he said, like, flip it on its head. What's the opposite of that? And this is not a logical opposite. This is an opposite inside you because these are meanings that are created inside you. And I, I looked at it and I suddenly realized there's no such thing as failure. If I fail at something, it's just a learning experience. Tuition. Tuition. Same. <laughs> um, yeah. So how you frame things in your mind is really important. And so there, I, I want to jump back to the biggest question of mindset because the positive intelligence piece is so powerful and it's um the, so the the assessment that uh janet did was um if you go to uh, positiveintelligence.com 
you can look it up. And actually, if anybody wants to do this, and, and there are two assessments there. One is your PQ. So you know, you know what IQ is, probably know what EQ is too, right? The emotional intelligence. They're both fueled, driven and sustained by how positive you are. And that's the energy source, either coming from your body, your heart centered, um, which is the sage, uh, or is it coming from your amygdala, which is your fight or flight? Your alligator brain. The negative piece. And the, the lie that we believe is that voice of negativity is useful to us. Let me put it this way. It's useful for one second. It tells you something's wrong. But to stay with it, it's like, if wallow. you, if you, what? To wallow in it. Oh, don't, yeah. Don't wallow. Oh, my gosh. No wallowing. If you put your hand on a stove, that pain is telling you, move your hand, right? If you have negative thoughts, we should have the same reaction. Because in order to solve that negativity, we need to go to a positive place. This is not a wise brain. That's the brain that's um, not focused, not motivated, irritable, impatient, um, has a poor memory, all these things that are negative because your brain isn't working right in that state. If you're fighting a bear, you don't need wisdom. You just need to go nuts. Adrenaline. Yeah, yeah you, need, you need adrenaline. It doesn't solve the kind of complex problems that you need to solve. If you're in this place of you know, having your grounded energy, first, there's three skills involved. And you can go to the website and learn more about it. But the first one, this is a saboteur brain the best kind of saboteur, you don't know that they're even there. You think they're you. Um, a, a meditator once said, it's hard to fight an enemy that has outposts in your head, right? This is true. The realization, that's not me, when it's very familiar. When you hear something mm -hmm. over and over again, you think wow. it's true. That's the way it works. Listen to political rhetoric. It's all they do. They tell you something over and over again and pretty soon people believe it. You know, facts be damned. So it's very powerful that we have that voice inside us and we really need to be able to step back. See, the saboteur interceptor is the first thing. You have to know what's going on. And then there's uh, moving into a sage place and the muscle of self-command where you say, okay, I'm gonna bring all the resources I have here in wisdom to the situation. Maybe I need more empathy. If I'm a controller, you know, I want to do it all myself because I can't trust anyone else. Even if you're leading a team, if that's the saboteur that's going on inside you, you're going to alienate your team. And guess what? Creativity shuts down. So what we want is to be able to see those saboteurs. They come so naturally. The problem is we don't even see them. Right. And so being able to if you uh, if you take your PQ test, sorry, finish that thought. If you're 75 or above, you're in a pretty positive place. You're going places. 20 percent of people are there. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, when I went and got my results back. I went, oopsie, I need some work. I, yeah. I need some work. Well, if you're um, if you're below that. Then you're not getting all of yourself in the game. You're spending so much time fighting with yourself, so much energy fighting with yourself that you're, you're just wasting precious resource. When I was thinking about that, you know, part of the success of being an investor is being able, being able to build a team of people that you know, that, that you trust that's gonna help you get there because it takes a village, right? For investing or anything. If you, if you think you're gonna do any of this by yourself, you're gonna, you're gonna need a, a property manager, an accountant, a lawyer, you know, uh, vendors, all of that. And if you're a total butthead, they are going to tell you to take a hike. Nothing is going to happen. Or you're going to pay three times as much, right? So I know it sounds like it's a really touchy-feely kind of a thing, but working on your brain and working on how you interpret the world is really important in how you are perceived by other people and how you perceive yourself and set yourself up for success throughout this whole process. Pretty uh, powerful stuff. Yeah, let me reframe empathy. It's not about 
you know, just caring about someone else. It's about understanding what's going on there. A good lawyer knows how to read the jury. Not, not because they're friends, right? Because they want to win the litigation. That makes sense? I'm not saying, you know, use your superpowers for evil or anything. I'm just saying you, you've got to know well, what's going on. It's already <laughs> taken off his little. So. Actually, it's, that's just wisdom. That's good wisdom. We, we you know, the 5% the emotional brain is pretty much a toddler. Um, anyway, so, so recognizing the saboteurs is the other quiz that you can take on that this is, site. Yeah, I need to do that. He did a factor analysis on half a million people. By the way, just because I'm so amazed by this guy, like I think every Fortune 100 company has had people do this training. This is, this is no joke. Um, and some of the results are so crazy, I'm embarrassed to say them out loud, except for it's Stanford and I work with these guys, I've talked with them. So I know this is, you know, they're for real, they're the real deal. But people who are in sales, did you see this stat? Mm. The average bump in sales from doing this program for the year is 37% increase in sales. It's touchy feely, but you, I like, don't know. you I don't, like the results? <laughs> I don't wanna make 37% more, more money next year, I don't know. I, you know, so if I were wanting to do, so help me help you in, yeah. you know, so first off, I'm going to say, all right, I, so I, I hire you kind of walk us through a little bit of what, what would happen if we were to hire you today? Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I want to know how to, you know, prime my mind so right. that I have a little bit of an, uh, an expectation of what you, what you would do for me. Um, and then give us a, we've got to wrap up and maybe there's yeah. some people that have some questions, but um, maybe give us like some final parting shots of okay. how we can, two or three things that we can take with us tonight to work on that um, reframing and, and being able to. Okay. Well, so first of all, working with me, the best coaching really follows that scientific method. Okay. You're looking for a result. What I was telling you earlier about focused and creating that vision, 20 years of neuroscience is, is where I get that. When you prime your brain that way, and, and it's something that you might not, you know, if depending on your level of negativity, or I think of it, it's kind of the trance that you're in right now. Um, you know, you, you take certain things for granted. Well, I can't do that. Well, no, you haven't done it yet. <laughs> If you can, maybe you'll do it tomorrow. So whatever those issues are, if we start with what's your vision, and then we're not just gonna, you know, be say, oh, well, you know, everything will happen because I've envisioned it. No, it won't. What's your clear-eyed assessment of where you are now? And what's the distance between the two? We make a plan to go from here to there. Okay. When we do that, it won't work, right? The first casualty of war is the plan of battle. Same thing in business. I don't know. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't ever work the way you think it's going to. How so many of you have ever had a deal that went absolutely perfectly smoothly? Raise your hand. No. <laughs> One maybe. One okay. person maybe. The, and and now is probably after a hundred deals where you've already like got the well old machine kind of a thing. So yeah. I, I think it's going to be so, important and learn how to deal with contingencies. And, and what we do, though, is we, we keep coming at it from a place of positivity. Because, again, <laughs> once you get into that negative place, you know, you're not using your resources in an effective way. So, um, you know, you, you gave great examples of reframing. What would be good in terms of money mindset? Boy, we've talked about a lot of things. There's more about this. You really need to look at your family, the family you grew up in. And then you need to look now at your behavior and your feelings around money. Your cognitive thoughts may mislead you. We all have a story we tell ourselves. That's not necessarily relevant. Thinking is, is small. But if you see the result, like the first thing I had with my family about money was I was like, hey, um, I was foolishly asking my uncle, who is a doctor, my parents are both teachers, 
right? He's a doctor. He, he's a part owner in the practice. He did it really well. I was like, well, how much do you make? <laughs> like I'm trying to career plan. Well, guess what I found out? This is the first time I saw everyone in the room because we weren't even alone. This is in front of other family members, right? So naive. Just watch everybody dance the side step. We had an unwritten rule in my family. You don't talk about money. Anybody else have that? Don't talk about money. Well, guess what? That's not a very informed way to live. Unspoken family rules, you might not even be aware of, are actually more powerful than spoken ones. But if you can look at what you do know about the way you think about money and what your behaviors are, you write, just write them down, write a list. Actually, I can give you a sheet that will guide you through a little process here. So, so yeah, if, if people want to go there and take the, the saboteur assessment, which gives you in that half million people, he found nine basic issues besides that inner critic that show up, victim, controller, avoider, hyper-rational, all these, all these different manifestations. What I'll do is I'll, I'll happily, you know, have a conversation with anybody here or in Cyberland um, and just, you know, walk you through it so you understand a little better and then um, also give you that sheet for reframing. Thanks for watching this video. If you like what you see, be sure to follow our Generational Wealth Learning Series. On Select Thursdays, we offer cutting-edge industry information that would normally cost thousands of dollars. And the best part, our education is absolutely free. If you register through our events page, you can join us live, either in person or over Zoom. In the meantime, like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a beat.